the social project conducted by those who are combined in self-government, and three, civic engagement. A number of such practices have been identified and illustrated by case reports in, useful, in the useful publication on citizenship education in Europe, which I cite, Schools for Society, it is called, this publication, Schools for Society, Learning Democracy in Europe, authored by Susanne Frank and Ted Huddleston. That's a, pro, a, a project promo, promoted by ILDE, I -L -D -E, which is the Initiative for Learning Democracy in Europe, of the network of European foundations and supported in the context of the Council of Europe, uh, Europe's program of democratic citizenship education by two major foundations, the Freudenberg Foundation in Germany and the Citizenship Foundation in London. I mean, if anybody of you is interested, you can just call me afterward and uh, I'll give you the titles because this is quite an interesting handbook with many examples of uh, concrete democratic action in schools and uh, also, I mean, these foundations might have an open ear for some of you applying for projects and things like that. I mean, these are, it's a federation of European projects. It is the uh, Initiative Learning Democracy in Europe by the Network of European Foundations. I shall briefly describe the three types of democracy enhancing action indicated by the three categories mentioned classroom council as a prototype of democratic self government or self regulation in schools, service learning as a prototype of a democracy enhanced community in a school community or a community with a school. So these are basic forms of action that can be approached in every kind of community. I turn to the Classroom Council first. It originated as a discursive device developed by the French school reformer Celestin Frenet in the early years of the 20th century with the purpose of discussing issues of instruction with the class, <coughs> organizing classroom practice in the home. It can be defined as a particularly effective variety of cooperative self-government, such as described by Piaget in his 1934 paper. But it's still a very modern paper, although it is written in 1934. So uh, it's worth reading. Uh, it has been republished in a book called Piaget, De l'Education, about education. In a number of schools intent on reform of instruction and pedagogy in Germany, it has since developed into a major example of democratic self-regulation within the classroom, and there is literature about it. The Classroom Council is a site of collective responsibility for the life in the group. The teacher acts as a coach rather than as a teacher monitoring the class. He is a coach, he is on an equal basis with the students. Where group practices self-determination regarding life in the classroom and the goals of classroom to common action. In regular intervals and with fixed slots in the weekly timetable, the fixed slots in the weekly timetable is very important, once in a week, always in the center, Friday after, Friday noon, between 12 and 1, something like that. Uh, the group discusses the rules and regulations for the class that, that they are going to give themselves for the class and, co and regulate after experience in, uh, within the class and perhaps modify a change according to necessity. It confers about its plans and projects. It defines upon projects, defines the, not, the duties of members, and it defines their tasks and obligations. Votes are cast, decisions are taken, conflicts are adjudicated, and projects are planned on the basis of discussions led by an elected president of the class 
and his aides or substitutes. Everybody has a function. Various roles and tasks are carried out by the elected officers or by commissions that report to the plenary assembly of the class about their activities and about their efforts. Conflict mediation and negotiation processes are in place to solve conflicts and to negotiate participation in the power structures of the institution. So the, the head teacher listens to the envoys of the, the student councils. Where a school assembly exists, the class and council will elect one or several delegates to represent the class in that assembly. In schools organized along participatory lines, the conference of teachers, the headmaster and the teacher parents council will invite student representatives elected by the classroom council to participate and to share both discussions and responsibilities. The councils thus are simultaneously, yet on separate occasions, institutions of self-government and representational bodies. They are both actors, each and any, in their own capacity, and they represent others who vote them in for certain, for, for certain duties, for certain positions and offices. And they train members for participation and social responsibility, as well as for con collective conflict resolution and representative government. The foundational process for all these functions is the discursive practice of the regular classroom council with all members of the class attending as voting members. The council trains participants from early on to speak and to listen, to take the perspective of the other and to assess the power of arguments, <coughs> listening, weighing, deciding on, has he right, is he right, is it wrong, what is right, what is wrong about this argument. To seek and to maintain agreement and to resolve conflict fairly where agreement fails. To negotiate rules and to evaluate these rules in the light of experience to plan and to participate in collective action and common projects. In schools that are geared to participatory schoolroom practice, the classroom council is the space of choice for instructional and institutional feedback that is likely to enhance both understanding and performance. Few institutional settings could be better suited than the classroom council to develop the socio-moral competencies and individual capabilities for cooperation and reciprocity on which the development of the basic democratic virtues depend. Let, let me proceed and try and do it quickly to the second type of educational project projects that serve the development of democratic habits among children and adolescents in school. This form of project is identified by its traditional American name as service learning, in spite of the fact that it has undergone <coughs> noticeable development towards a tool for democratic action in the transfer process, especially to Germany. <coughs> in service learning projects, in service learning projects, students take responsibility for the common good, for the welfare of others, by turning to a social problem, by working on a solution, by responding to a challenge in the community. This will mostly be a hometown problem, <coughs> responding to a challenge in the community. But, uh, Students may also choose to engage in the school project in the third world or join a cooperative network designed to respond to a general ecological need. In the traditional model, 
service learning project form on two fronts. On the level of practice, they attempt to solve a social problem in the community. For example, they might be helping senior citizens to cope with computers, learn, teach them to use the computer so that they are not excluded from the world. Or they might run a soup kitchen. I don't know whether anything like that exists in Cyprus, but <coughs> it is necessary in Germany and very much so in America. Run a soup kitchen for a poor neighborhood. Or, that is a recent project, plant trees in a living quarter while informing citizens about the climate change and the necessity of maintaining green in the city. Simultaneously, the problem may become a problem of instruction in the class. This is a project made by the class, but it involves instruction so that the, problem, so that the projects combine responsibility in the communal context with a social learning project in the school. And social action with rational discussion the aim, about the aim and context of the action. The cooperation of teachers is then, of course, essential. Teachers and students have to debate the project, and the teachers have to take so, so the instructional side of the project and clarify it, whereas students act then, so to say, knowingly, in cooperation with the teachers uh, following the project. When this model of le service learning is placed in the classroom with a classroom council, as I have defined before, the council is recognized, the council itself is recognized as a collective actor pursuing the practice of social entrepreneurship in a community context. Successful action of this kind will likely initiate strong reciprocity between the school and the community. Certainly both the case of learning through experience and of developing the socio-moral resources of democracy. The projects call for shared action, negotiation, and agreement on a common goal, rationally planning and conducting action together, a meaningful evaluation and documentation of results, a public presentation, in some participation and cooperation of the entire group. In its developed form, the project productively confronts the group with social reality out there in the community, the teacher with the students, a social problem with the requirements of instruction, the flow of time with the regulated timetable, the school with the community, a working ground simultaneously for democracy and for individual development. The third type of involvement in the practice of democracy beyond the classroom council and beyond the social projects of service learning we highlight what in German is called civic engagement, or something like the equivalent of civic engagement, or civic commitment, and in English may be approximately rendered by volunteering or community service. There is clearly no definite limits that divide volunteerism from certain types and various goals of service learning projects. Volunteering may indeed be understood to transfer the responsibility taken within the school to an arena outside and beyond the school. Obviously, the development of the capability to volunteer in the service of the community and of public welfare is a worthy goal of education in the schools. And, may, and training young people for thoughtful commitment to issues of public welfare is a contribution to education for democracy where action is paired with understanding. Action and understanding always have to go together. Basically, civic engagement can develop in two directions. Firstly, when adolescents start to develop articulate political and analytical interests, they will become sensitive to the structural problems of the school neighborhood, ready to confront the social, cultural, and ecological problems of the community, 
to search for potential strategies of action, to raise the public awareness of the communal issues of discontent or failure. When a classroom council engages in this kind of action, it may organize same, some kind of public deliberation about an issue of political concern and common concern. Public deliberation is a hotbed of democracy development, both individual and social. When schools engage systematically in such initiatives of civic engagement, they can be seen as educating for active citizenship in the communitarian sense of the term that's used in the American literature. The second strategy involves turning to the community with a somewhat different goal in mind. Instead of carrying the group's preoccupations into the community, it will focus on the task of mobilizing citizens to civic involvement for the school and together with the school. The strategy will lead the group to an attempt to activate citizens, experts, business leaders, social workers, artists, to participate in actions in the service of the school, citizens' actions that ultimately turn the civic ownership of the school over to those active in the service of its development, to make it their school, to make it the citizens' schools, to make the citizen actors in the schools. We have now, um, Finishing this, we have now uh, described three types of democracy-enhancing activities in schools. First, the classroom council as an instrument of democratic self-regulation. Second, service learning as a social project, combining social action with the contribution of instruction. And third, the practice of civic engagement or volunteering as a basis for developing and cultivating the competence required for community organizing and democratic action in the local community. All of these activities require and provide in practice the socio-cognitive and socio-moral competencies on whose practice the democratic virtues thrive. In the context of democratic school culture, there is an obvious advantage in granting the classroom council a privileged position as a strategic center of action with organizing and planning the social projects and volunteering initiatives of the class as an exercise in social entrepreneurship where students are trained to cooperatively and discursively practice and develop their social cognitive and socio-moral competencies in the service of socially desirable aims of citizenship and democratic empowerment. So, I think I'll leave out the uh, concluding arguments for bring them when you need them. Thank you very much.